Heartland Beef has an uncertain future in the 10th episode of season 17 of Heartland. In an accident that jeopardizes the wedding and puts everyone in danger, Nathan tries to make amends with Amy while caring to his injured horse. A different aspect of Katie's personality is revealed. While Shane was busy putting up a sound system and a plethora of lights at the Gazebo, Amy was busy teaching Chloe how to ride Nathan's force, powder, side saddle. But the Gazebo caught fire, so clearly something went wrong with the lighting when Amy and Chloe were relaxing. Thankfully, the Gazebo was the only building that caught fire and no one was hurt. But when he saw that powder was tied to a Gazebo post, he became excited and bolted. Amy let the horse go, but she couldn't calm them down afterwards. On top of that, Shane and Chloe broke up. The bride and groom were already on edge before the fire broke out since Chloe found out that Shane hadn't handed his notice at work yet, even though they're leaving for London in a few weeks. In addition, the fire exacerbated the situation. In the aftermath of Amy, Nathan, Miranda, Shane, and Chloe extinguishing the fire, Chloe started to fret that Shane could have overloaded the extension cable. Shane fired back, claiming that Chloe's insistence on a music system with a lot of lights was the only reason he did it. Tim told them that the gaze bow would not be restored in time for the wedding following his return from Calgary, more on that later, and Chloe lost it when Amy conveyed the terrible news that she wouldn't be riding powder down the aisle. They had already planned to go to London, but Shane still hadn't quit his job, so they got into an argument. The fact that he had agreed to a work call with the partners, she said, made him careless and led to the fire. After a series of unfortunate events, Chloe suggested to Shane that they cancel the wedding altogether. It was wonderful that Tim and Miranda could be there for their son. Tim also helped Shane understand that no matter what happens in the outside world, a connection will remain intact. Shane and Chloe did get to have a talk the next day, so clearly the chat was fruitful. Chloe expressed her regret for becoming all bridezilla on Shane, and Shane apologized for reconsidering his plans to live in London in light of a promotion opportunity he received from his law firm partners. A really excellent job opportunity in Philadelphia was on the horizon, so Chloe encouraged Shane to take the position and let him know about it. They came to the realization that they could both stay in the nation without sacrificing their jobs. Their reconciliation allowed for the rescheduling of the wedding. The region where Amy and T planned to build their house was one of the most picturesque areas of the Heartland Ranch, so Amy offered it as the wedding venue for Chloe and Shane. With Nathan's help, the powder was even ready on time, and the wedding ceremony, in which Jack married Shane and Chloe, was beautiful and attended by all of their loved ones. It was the most beautiful wedding ceremony I had ever imagined. Having Shane's father and sisters there to see his wedding was a beautiful experience as well. If there are any more seasons, I would love to see the happy couple travel to Heartland instead of London, even if we can just watch a little portion of the ceremony. Nevertheless, at the conclusion of Heartland's 17th episode, episode 10, Amy and Nathan's friendship had improved. Not every relationship that had its share of challenges and triumphs also ended happily ever after, like Shane and Chloe's. If you remember from last week, Nathan said certain things to Amy at the end of the last episode that made her quite angry. We found out that Nathan's wife had cheated on him, leading to their divorce and making Nathan duplicitous about love. He went so far as to imply that the pain he now thinks all relationship ends in includes Amy's connection with Ty. The damage had already been done when Nathan tried to apologize to Amy after realizing his words had hurt her. So, in this episode, we saw Nathan try to apologize. Powder had plenty time with Amy to recover from his fear after the Gasebo fire and be ready for Shane and Chloe's wedding. Fortunately, the horse was in the hands of Amy and Nathan. At the beginning of the episode, Nathan attempted to make amends when he went to the dude ranch to get powder, but they were cut off by the Gasebo fire. While they were looking for powder, who had fled in fear of the fire, Nathan decided to give it another go. Even when Nathan apologized, Amy was first skeptical. On the other hand, he was able to make it clear that he doesn't think every relationship is certain to fail, but he also can't see himself getting married again since life is too hard. Amy didn't quite get Nathan's take on love, but our heroine saw beyond his words and realized there was more to his explanation. His claim that he has given up on love is not totally true, as she pointed out, since he is a rather complex guy. In addition, it goes against what Nathan had asked, which was for Amy to go on rides, 
and what he had done to actively create time for Amy. While Nathan was tending to the powder, Amy and Nathan had a chat at the stable, which subsequently proved this to us. He inquired as to whether Emmy was still seeing Tay, and she knew full well the pain and heartache that would accompany their separation. Along with ensuring she comprehended that his distaste for a failed marriage is not indicative of his desire to see similar outcomes for others. After Amy made it clear that she would do it again in a second, Nathan seemed to change. His already heightened need to be prepared with powder for the wedding of Chloe and Shane just became stronger. He went so far as to encourage Amy to keep going when she started to question their capacity to refocus powder in time. He worked with Powder first thing the next morning and restored Powder's faith in him. Powder trusts Nathan, but Amy was still nervous about Chloe riding down the aisle as Nathan was handling the horse. To Amy's astonishment, Nathan agreed to do it despite his prior statements about love and marriage. Nathan waited beside the horse while Chloe rode down the aisle, and he also served as her escort throughout the wedding. Chloe got off the horse without collecting her bouquet from Nathan, and she blanched at Amy. Afterwards, Nathan and Amy reconciled when Amy and Lindy were out riding toward the episode's conclusion. Nathan helped Amy a lot with powder, and Amy was really appreciative. Nathan went along with Lindy's suggestion to go cloud gazing as the episode ended with a shot of Lindy and Amy, together with Nathan gazing peacefully at the sky with Nathan's dog, Molly, lying next to them. Heartland episode 10 of season 17 also somewhat resolved the narrative between Garland Foods and Heartland Beef. The last episode had Lou, Tynam, and Jack pitching Fred a brilliant plan to boost sales and keep Garland Foods' exclusive deal with Heartland Beef. On the other hand, Fred came off as shady and distracted in every single interaction they had. At the end of the episode, Lou got an email from Garland Foods saying that Heartland Beef was going away. Is that all? I don't understand. In an effort to learn the facts and convince Fred to reconsider his decision to leave Heartland Beef and his firm, it was decided in this episode that Jack, Tim, and Lou will go see Fred in person. Their arrival at the Calgary headquarters of Garland Foods was met with a tremendous shock. After Fred's receptionist refused to let them see him, Tim stepped in and rushed to his office. As Fred barged into Tim's office, Tim ignored him. In the wake of Fred's apparentist missile that the board passed that morning, Iris McLean assumed the role of CEO of Garland Foods. Just that one thing confused and even angered Lou, Jack, and Tim. After all, Fred used to boast nonstop about how family-owned Garland Foods is, but it seems like it is no longer the case. Security escorting them out of the Garland Foods plant was a further setback. With Garland Foods out of the picture as a potential buyer for Heartland Beef, their only option was to go back home. The next day, Jack confronted Nathan directly, stating his conviction that Nathan intended to eliminate Heartland Beef from the market. Of course, Nathan tried to set the record straight, saying that he had always intended for them to be friendly competitors rather than enemies. Additionally, he tried to motivate Jack to keep going, but Jack was unmoved. Luckily, the next morning, Lisa, whose birthday they celebrated that night, asked to move the herd so a family cattle drive was planned. Then things started looking up for Heartland Beef. Since Heartland Beef is a family-run company, Tim, Jessica, Jack, Lisa, Lou, Amy, Katie, and Lindy were able to successfully transport cattle without employing anyone else. It seems like the cattle drive also boosted Jack's spirits. After expressing gratitude to the family for their help, he reassured everyone that Heartland Beef will prosper regardless of Garland Foods' participation. Furthermore, after the journey, Jessica took some photographs of the Heartland women, which motivated Lou to think of a new concept for Heartland. That being said, Lou, Tim, and Jack went back to the Calgary offices of Garland Foods, but this time they planned a more official meeting with the board to pitch the idea that Heartland women are the brand's future. The proposal that Lou had drafted included every detail, down to the marketing strategy and sales plan. Although Lou, Tim, and Jack expressed their disapproval of the new Garland Foods treatment of them, the CEO abruptly ended her speech before she could inform the board of their strategy shift. After reassuring Eurus and the board that Garland Foods is crucial to the success of Heartland Beef, Lou confidently exited the session. Contrarily, it is not the case. Even though Heartland Beef and Garland Food don't seem to be cooperating anymore, I don't think they should lose up just yet. 
they were determined to fight and figure out a new path for their future, and Tim, Lou, and Jack would definitely do just that. It will definitely be a do-it-all, even with Lou on board and working hard to guarantee Heartland Beef's future existence. I only hope Heartland is extended for many more seasons to see how it turns out. In the last episode, Lou gave Katie a dirt bike, and while the grown-ups were worried about marriage, horse purchases, and company launches, Katie played outdoors on it. While out riding, Katie asked Ellie about jumping over obstacles. After hearing Ellie talk about the incredible surge of excitement from leaping, Katie decided to give it a go. Even though Ellie has confessed to her friends that she is risk-averse, she advised Katie to ease into it and work her way up, but saying it was easier than doing it. Ellie, who was also quite kind, commented that Katie probably wasn't the type to leap. Katie was also bad at jumping. Katie was so intent on doing it that she kept going even after their friendship had blossomed. She didn't give up after her first fall. Ellie even dared to imply that Katie could be a bit of a daredevil after all. However, Katie didn't achieve her goal until the very last scene. After she and Ellie, along with Brandon, built the course, she called her mother to come play on it and told Lou that she was planning to leap over the barrier. Of course, Lou was a little nervous, but Katie reassured her that she still wanted to make the leap and that she wanted Lou to be there with her so that Lou would always know her mom would be there for her, no matter how dangerous it was. After that, she leaped with precision. Nothing frightened Lou. She was really quite happy for her daughter. They exchanged high fives and giggled. It was a clear indication of how far down the road to reconciliation Lou and Katie had come this season. Both of them have undoubtedly faced challenges along the way. However, the fact that Katie Metchers and Lou start to trust her judgment more shows how similar they are and how fantastic their relationship may be. By the end of the piece, I wanted to express my admiration for the few lines of conversation that occurred between Miranda, Tim, and Jessica. Both Tim and Miranda had grown up a lot since they were together, however, as we saw in the most recent episode. It was unnecessary to be concerned, was concerned since they are both in new relationships that are going well. That is shown by Miranda's conversations with Jessica and Tim in this episode. Miranda and Jessica were seen chatting in the loft while the gaze bow was on fire and she was looking for Tim. It seemed like the two ladies had finally accepted Tim for who he was and were able to live peacefully together, regardless of his past. And it seems like Miranda has finally accepted the reality that she and Tim were never meant to be together. It's better than nothing. Their paths were destined to diverge. Then, just before the wedding, Tim and Miranda spoke and reached the same decision. Their relationship may have ended in failure, but that's okay since shame served as a gift. The understanding that their lives had unfolded according to plan permeated these fleeting conversations, creating the illusion that Tim's mistakes and his history were being recognized and even remedied. It was time for everyone to go on. It is still unclear if Heartland will get an 18th season, which is a major disappointment. It will likely be a few months before we get any word since these decisions are often made in the spring or early summer. For example, May 8, 2018 and June 1, 2022 were the dates of the announcements for the renewal. Still, I'm holding out hope. A large, enthusiastic, and ever-growing fandom has formed around the Netflix series Heartland, thanks to the show's immense success. Heartland was the fifth most streamed TV show in the U.S. in 2021.